Put fluoride in his water, give him chemicals to eat because the system only works if the people stay asleep. Don't worry about being caught because the people act like sheep. We've been doing it forever and they don't make a peep. These are lines from my poem, Make America Think Again. I just released a musical version of it on Spotify. And the reality of this world is that there are systems in place that are designed to control the people. There are systems that have been implemented that are profiting from people falling in line and not challenging the status quo and just saying, okay, let me do what I'm told. And I don't want to even get into whether this is a, a giant conspiracy or, or any of that. I want to get into just the very practical of those systems were helpful to get us to where we are now. They've, if you look around at the development, if you look around at all of the people who have access now to clean water, the people who are getting access to the internet, the po what poverty looks like now compared to 100 years ago, all of these things are improving. And we have these systems to thank for that. They've been supportive. And we get to evolve the systems because as humans on the individual level, we evolve. And as a collective, as a representation of the individual, we are also evolving. But here's the thing about that. The process of evolution, if you've been going through it personally, you understand the dark night of the soul, the breakdown to the breakthrough, the parts of ourselves that, that the ego deaths, the, the parts of ourselves that we've associated with our identity and thought, okay, this is me, this is uh, who I am. And then it all falls to pieces and all of a sudden we're looking around going, who am I now? That process can be incredibly scary and incredibly painful. And so on a collective level, when we talk about the society that we're in crumbling around us, when we look at the education system, the government system, the economic system, the medical system that seems to be crumbling around us, it is scary, it can be painful, it can be a dark night of the soul on a collective level. And so what we get to do is have compassion for people who are having difficulty with this evolution. Instead of pointing the finger at people and villainizing them for their ignorance, can we have compassion for the fact that they don't know what the hell is going on? They don't know what to do. And in all honesty, a lot of times the alternative systems aren't well thought out. They're not convenient. They're not well funded. And so when we say, oh, you should, you're, you're giving in to the government's conspiracy about this because what is our alternative? What are we saying is another option that they can lean into? And if we don't have that other option, that's okay. But instead of just insulting people, because that's what I'm seeing online, I'm just seeing people insult other people and saying, you're ignorant, you have your head in the sand, you're uh, willf willfully ignoring the realities of what are go what's going on. Ask yourself the question, why might they be doing that? Why might they choose to not look into the conspiracy theories? Why may they want to avoid the truths that are coming out around the medical system and the government um, behind the scenes, dark shadow ways of operating? Why might that be the case? Usually it's because that person is not equipped with how to deal with that. That person does not have the faculties, the toolkit, the support system around them for the pain, the fear, the anger that can come up and arise from accepting these realities of what's going on. And so instead of thinking that by insulting them or pointing blame at them that somehow that's going to get them to change their mind and wake up to, to whatever it is that we may want them to wake up to. Instead, look at what ways are you creating the safe space for them 
so that if they do start to acknowledge what's going on behind the scenes, well then they also have an opportunity to lean into the support that's available. They have the opportunity to be held in that dark night of the soul, in that ego death, in that identity crisis that can happen in these instances. This is a way that we can each individually show up and provide people the safe spaces for their own growth and as a result of that, the growth of the entire collective. This is how we can speed this process up but do it in a way that has more ease and more grace and a bit more love. <laughs> Thank you for listening to this. I hope it resonates with you. Send it to anyone who might need to hear it. I want to remind you that always, in always, you are seen, you are heard, and you are loved.